and they are seeded and their constant scale become sold out. The style of their style of uh, very unique, I think. Uh, sorry, I think they are focused on the Japanese culture and other features. That is why they are able to succeed in the world. Can let me show you a movie? Open Gangnam Style! Have you ever heard this phrase or song before? Yeah, I think most people know this song, right? This is Sai's Oppa Gangnam Style. This is K-pop and it's world famous. Okay, let me talk about the differences between J-pop and K-pop artists. At first, K-pop artists mainly focuses on cool, you see? But they also have cuteness. Now I want to show you K-pop cuteness and J-pop kawaii. Secondly, the skill and the role to they be also differs between J-pop and K-pop artists. First of all, K-pop artists have to pass the production company's auditions. However, they cannot debut right away. They become a trainee student and practice dancing, singing, and so on. Some can debut within five years, but others can't. For example, the hottest member and the leader of Big Bang called GD trained 11 years. This is the longest record. However, Big Bang is very famous and the group is known to represent Asia. Lastly, they also have language skill. When they become a trainee student, they start to study languages such as English and Japanese. For example, please have a look here. Do you see how he can speak Japanese quite well in a Japanese TV program here? Okay. In conclusion, Japanese artists, besides the skills of singing and dancing, also need to learn other languages in order to succeed in the world. Being able to uh, being able to communicate is the vital to, to succeed in the world. That is why we also want to master our English. Thank you for listening. Now, all group is um, Urawa Okan. Fujino Fujimi Ga Oka High School for Girls. The title is The Holy Land. Okay. While I scroll through a few of these words, I would like you to read them and then picture what you imagine inside your head. Now I would like to show you some images. more powerful to you, the words or the images? I'm showing you this to prove that images speak louder than words. To my surprise, humans have the tendency of becoming more drawn to images than words. To my surprise, your brain can process images 60,000 times faster than words. This is also called the picture security effect. Now look at these words. What can you picture? This
This was taken on September 11, 2001 at the World Trade Center. Although this captures a man only a few seconds before his death, unlike other tragic 9-11 photos, he seems very relaxed and peaceful, despite what awaits him. I was drawn to this image because usually 9-11 terrorist attack images capture to towers, planes, or injured people. But this one was different. It stood out and it was burned onto my mind. I don't think that there are many existing pictures that capture peace in a tragic death. Even the witnesses thought that it was like they were watching a movie. What makes this photo so engaging is that it makes you question what it came to represent. Now look at these sentences and compare them with the picture shown afterwards. This photo went viral a while ago. It shows a three-year-old Syrian refugee boy named Alan Cody, who drowned and washed up on shore while attempting to flee. In this sentence, it mentions 600 children dying, but in the picture, it only shows one boy but it has a stronger impact that words cannot express. There was only a little interest in the crisis of Syria, but after this image came out, the number of internet searches for Syria and refugees spiked. Not only this, but on social media, the hashtag refugee welcome has been used thousands of times, even today. This is called the Alan Cody effect. I'm going to show you another one. This photo is a brutal one. It portrays a terribly wounded boy sitting in an ambulance. It's not just his injuries that shock us, but it's also the despair in his look that gives us the shivers. Many parents made an emotional connection with this boy due to the fact that he's fairly young, he's well-dressed, and he could have been anyone's child. Rather than statistical reports of body counts, a single photo like these can stir the emotions and raise public concern. It can also influence our actions. For instance, until this photo was released, people seemed to be only focused on the overall humanitarian crisis in Syria, but this turned people's focus towards a more specific empathy and concern for the people. Soon, the numbers of people donating to charitable organizations to aid victims increased. Going back to the picture superiority effect, it's amazing that just by seeing an image, it can change our mood and leave impressions much faster and more accurately than words can. How astonishing is it that a single picture can control your emotions and actions. Like the falling man, it's very fascinating that many different aspects and emotions can be communicated by just one image. My wish is that photos can continue to be the messenger and spread what is going on to the world in a more direct way so more and more people can feel empathy and get involved into the get get involved towards the crisis we face. However, when photos of refugees go public, we have a tendency of only being aware for a short amount of time and forgetting about it like it was none of our business to start with. I strongly believe that we cannot end the crisis unless we continuously take action and put ourselves into others' shoes. There are reports that state when comparing the dust tolls before and after the images of Syrian refugee boys went viral, the deaths have increased by more than a fifth. Unfortunately, the problem hasn't improved. It has deteriorated. Alan Curdy has sacrificed his life to send us a message that if we do not take action, this will happen continuously. Although some countries have started to accept refugees, we cannot assume that they can now have a safe life. Most problems start from the moment they cross the border.
We all have the responsibility. We all have the responsibility to get involved and not just donate, but looking at the long run. Supplying necessities isn't the only solution. We have to think about why people are continuously fleeing. I'm not saying that donating is useless, but can it stop the war? I don't think so. What we can also do right now is gain more knowledge about the crisis and dispatch photos on social networks. Even watching the news or reading an article can expand your horizons and increase awareness. We should always keep in mind that we could have easily been the victim in these pictures. We all have a duty to help one another when we need help. We can't stop pretending that we cannot help because to solve this, everyone's effort is necessary. Thank you. I would like to announce uh, exciting news that uh, the JCOM uh, station is here with the big camera in the back, you can see that. Just back. Uh, they televised this competition on Thursday, 5, 5.40 in the evening, 21, that's 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock, three times on Thursday, uh, channel 11, BS. So we look forward to it. 